truly, I lived a year waiting for the week that we get to go and catch fish. Couldn't ask for a better scenario there. Let him go. Oh, yep, just let him go. I just got pinned. And there you have it. Trying to manage a particular fish is a five-step process. First, you have to figure out what fish are out there and if their numbers are growing or declining. The Parks and Wildlife Coastal Fisheries Sampling Program has been in place since the mid-70s. And we've been using a variety of sampling gears, including gill nets and bag seines and bay trawls to monitor populations of marine species. We do that by keeping everything consistent over time so that as the catch changes, it reflects changes in populations. 204. By tracking populations, we're able to make recommendations for the harvest of various marine species about how many can be caught and the size of fish that can be caught. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission considers these recommendations when it makes any changes to game and fish regulations. This is the second step in fisheries management, regulation and enforcement of those regulations. Game wardens also have the responsibility to check fish markets and restaurants. So in looking at this uh, commercial fish house. One of the things that jumps out is he's got redfish, labeled redfish here. In this particular case, what I'll be looking for is whether or not he has the appropriate license because it is a commercially protected fin fish and that this is farmed raised in Texas uh, with the appropriate documentation. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's exactly what we were looking for. A third component of fisheries management is a hatchery program that enhances existing fish populations and advances research efforts. Texas Parks and Wildlife operates three marine hatcheries along the Texas coast. Every year, our fisheries managers give us a quota on the number of fish that we're to produce. And for instance, this year, we're producing 24 million red drum fingerlings and release them into our Texas bays. Inside the hatchery, biologists manipulate the daily hours of light and change the water temperature to mimic the spawning conditions the fish naturally experience in the wild. Not all the rooms spawn at one time. This room will spawn for about a month and a half or two, then we'll stop it from spawning. We can collect each morning anywhere from a couple of hundred thousand to six to eight million eggs. We find on average somewhere between about one and not quite 10 percent of all the red drum in a bay are going to be hatchery fish. There are a lot of fish in Texas bays and estuaries, which tells you in terms of numbers that there's quite a few fish out there that are hatchery fish, and so the hatchery program is effectively doing its job. While redfish populations in Texas are doing fine, 493. sampling surveys indicate a decline in the numbers of southern flounder. Up and down the coast, the population of southern flounder has been diminishing. You know, it's more so down in the lower coast and upper coast, but overall the population is going down. For the past several years we've been working on developing methods and techniques to grow southern flounder. The hatcheries have only been raising flounder since 2008, so it's still a process of discovery. Flounder are totally different from redfish and trout. It's a whole new ball game, so we're at the beginning stages of uh, learning how to culture this fish. And so what you're seeing right now are some of the first spawns that Parks and Wildlife has done in this manner. What we're going to do is release some of these fingerlings into this nice estuarine habitat. We've got a really good incoming tide and really good shoreline with a lot of grass, a lot of cover and protection for these fish. The survival of any kind of fish depends upon habitat. That's the fourth component of fisheries management, habitat protection. 
with the increasing number of boats on the water, these critical habitats are threatened by boat propellers that gouge out scars in the shallow bays. At the Redfish Bay State Scientific Area, biologists are conducting research on the impact of prop scars. We have a set of scars we revisit on a monthly basis and collect measurements such as width, depth, percent of coverage, um, the different species that are in the scar, um, as well as in the surrounding area that was not disturbed. So we want to compare this disturbed area of the scar to the adjacent non-disturbed area. This research will help evaluate the regulations in Redfish Bay. But most seagrass in Texas is unprotected, and its health depends upon the support and awareness of the public. This is the fifth and probably most important aspect of fisheries management. Without public support, compliance, and participation, fisheries management would be impossible. That's all I'll make sure that you still had the option to rip that red drum tag off. One grassroots organization of private citizens that has grown into a major force is the Coastal Conservation Association. What they started here has extended well beyond our shores. CCA is now in 17 states, started in Texas and grew rapidly all the way up the Atlantic coast and now to the Pacific coast and nearly 100,000 members and volunteers. So it's been an incredible story of growth and an incredible story of accomplishment. CCA has partnered with Texas Parks and Wildlife in virtually all aspects of fisheries management. They have supported the ongoing assessments of fish populations and championed laws to protect red drum, spotted sea trout, and many other species. CCA has helped build and equip all Texas marine hatcheries, and they've also donated funds to coastal law enforcement. One of the most important ways CCA has impacted conservation has been through an evolution in the attitudes of anglers. Waiting the long flats and seeing redfish that you throw your fly out in front of and they snatch that fly. I just love to be outside. I love to see the sunrise and just enjoy being out on the water. Plus, I just never got tired of pulling in a fish and looking at it and letting it go. We've changed what it takes to make an individual satisfied with their experience in nature, with their experience on the water. They don't just go catch a fish, they look at the birds. They worry about the brown tide. They worry about the red tide. They worry about the freshwater inflows. They worry about the dam in the rivers, the flood in the timber. So, yeah, we do some good. We can't do it all by ourselves, but we do some good. Well, good job. Thank you.